Hey, we're here at a uh, Game Grumps Live. We're excited. Stone Pony. Yeah. You know, sometimes we like to give love to smaller YouTubers like the Game Grumps. Like the Grump you know. Games. We do. We they have deserve it. Damn, all these people and not a single Dragon Link player. Danny, do you have anything to say to your wonderful fans? Stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> no, that's my demographic. Ain't no laws while you're drinking claws. What? Oh no. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. A specter is haunting TMT, the specter of Dragon Link. All the powers of last meta have entered into a holy alliance to exercise this specter. Striker and Salad, Thunder and Orcist, Geist and Reactor FTK. After prognosticating for weeks about the imminent death of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's probably time that we actually, you know, take a look at the deck and see if it's the power acknowledged by the rest of the metagame. Presenting Dragon Link. So here's the list, and huh. You know, for a strategy we were about to call Rocket Link, this deck is really playing about two whole rockets. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Dragon Link is the current boogeyman of the format, a deck predicted, based on results from the OCG, to annihilate the metagame and crown Gar Dragon LP as the Eternal Emperor of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Using a series of cards gifted to us in the Rocket Structure deck, this Gift to Gar Dragon aims to summon Eeb the World Chalice Miko as fast as possible, and to use her as enough extension to build a board soggy with negates. The method by which you board build is slightly more big-brained than Crusadia Danger Thunder. Instead of free summons, you need to chain through Dragon Links like Romulus to bin Tempest, the Gar Dragons to summon and then recur Red Eyes, and Boral Swords to trigger Silver Rocket, but the end goal is the same. Spheres, Abyss Red, Borolode Savage, and Opelousa and Dweller provided you've got the extenders. The best board results in three monster negates, two omni negates, a Spheres, the graveyard turned off, and a card ripped from your opponent's ED, which is about as extra as first turn setups get. Unfortunately, the trade-off to tinkering with explosivity of this level is Garnets. Now the deck is nice with it. It's unironically playing four cards that you have an obscenely difficult time surviving through hate if you draw. This is one of those strategies that would see a hugely increased win rate if you could activate Pot of Generosity before you started playing. Because of this, the deck's playing as many redundant cards and starters as possible, and the combos are anything but linear. Most importantly, you need a way to summon Eeb the World Chalice Miko with a dragon in the graveyard. Almost any hand that can accomplish this can perform the full combo. The most easy way is by using Overraptor to bin Carbonetten and summon Flamvel Guard from deck, but Foolishes, Quick Launch, and Miscellaneousaurus routinely fill in either for missing combo pieces or for must resolves that have been ash blossomed. Hopefully, playing a full build of backup Bunguses will make up for the hands of Carbonetten, Flamvel Guard, Aeolo, and World Chalice Guard Dragon that we're sure to draw. So, with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Dinos, three Overraptor and three Miscellaneousaurus. After that are our Rockets, Absorouter, Tracer, Silver Rocket, and Synchron. Next are two cards that should definitely not still be legal, Black Dragon Collapse Serpent and White Dragon Wyver Buster, followed by three Ash Blossom. The next four cards are monsters I don't want to draw, but don't hate seeing, Alexandrite Dragon, an Alt Carbo Target, a Die Summon, and a general all-around backup option for particular hands that lack a four-star, not a one-star tuner. Red Eyes and Tempest are self-explanatory, and Destrudo performs as well here as anywhere else. After that are four cards that I legitimately blame for my losses, Carbon Eden, Gar Dragon, Aeolo, and Flamvel Guard. There are ways to make it out of hands with these four, but they make us much weaker to hand traps. For spells, we're on three Die, three Fossil Dig, three Called, three Quick Launch, one Dragon Shrine, one World Legacy Gar Dragon, Monster Reborn, Foolish Burial, World Legacy Succession, and one Dragon Ravine, searchable off of Romulus. The extra is almost locked, to be honest. Hot Red, Boral Guard, Eeb, Abyss Dweller, Boral Sword, Sari, Appaloosa, Triple Burst, Phoenix, Lambda, Romulus, Spheres, and Guard Dragons Agrippen, Elpi, and Pisti. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Hero, a deck that I think is consistently underrated, and you can see me commentate on the Pro Play Games YouTube channel right now. Unfortunately for our opponent, while they have all the material in hand necessary to pop off, I don't think they're going to be afforded the opportunity. Our grip save for the Aeolo in the opener, is excellent. 
We're going to lead with a copy of Fossil Dig to get a copy of Over After to Hand. Afterwards, we're going to activate Unexpected Die to play around a single hand trap for a Flamevel Guard. We'll normal summon a copy of Over After, sending a Carbon End in the Graveyard, then Synchro Summon and Eve the World Chalice Miko for a World Legacy Guard Dragon. We'll activate that, bringing back the Guard and Link Summoning a Lambda. We'll then activate Eve's Effect to get a Guard Dragon. We'll Link Summon a copy of LP, use Guard Dragon's Effect to bring back Guard, and Link Summon a copy of Pisty. We'll activate LP's Effect to get a Red Eyes. We'll use Red Eyes to get back this Guard, and then we will Link Summon Sorry. Wow, that's amazing. We're going to activate Fossil Dig. We're then going to activate Pisty to bring back this copy of Red Eyes. Use Red Eyes' effect to bring back the guard and Link Summon an Agrapin. We'll use Agrapin to turn into Archfiend Abyss and then we'll Link Summon a Romulus. We're going to use Romulus' effect for a Dragon's Ravine. We'll activate the Dragon's Ravine, sending this copy of Miscellaneous Source to send a Tempest to Graveyard. We'll Special Summon a copy of Rocket Synchron and Special Summon a Tempest. Afterwards, we're going to Special Summon a copy of Absurder Dragon and Synchro Summon a copy of Borolode Savage. After that, we're going to Special Summon a copy of White Dragon Wyvern Buster and go into Spheres. That's going to trigger the effect of White Dragon to get Black Dragon. We'll then special summon a copy of Aeolo from deck, going to Appaloosa for three. Oh my god, and then activate Carbon for Alexandrite. Special summon this copy of Black Dragon, and wish our opponent good luck. <laughs> We're going to activate Abyss Dweller absolutely immediately. They're going to activate E-Emergency Call and Engage. We'll negate the Engage. I know what they're on, but I still feel like they can't resolve it. We're going to use Appaloosa to negate the effect of Solid Soldier, and they'll attack into our spheres, which we will chain in order to get ourselves a copy of Destrudo. That's no big deal for us. They're going to set two and pass, but we should be able to attack without running into something like the Solemn Judgment they have set. We'll special summon this copy of Tempest and get in for 2850, 3500, and lethal. Our second match is up against Dinosaur, so I guess we'll really get to see who the Apex Predator is. Our opponent's got an Amorphage Sloth in their opener. If you're wondering why I'm not playing Sloth, it's simple math, really. Five Garnets is more than four. Our hand is just as good as last time, full combo through a singular hand trap, although this time we'll be using the Grave Effect of Carbon Eden much earlier. We're going to normal summon a copy of Soul Eating Over After, then use Carbon Eden for a Flamvel Guard before Synchro Summoning an Eeb. We'll activate Eeb's Effect and then activate World Legacy Guard Dragon to bring the Flamvel Guard back, Link Summoning a Lambda, and then using Eeb's Effect for a World Chalice Guard Dragon. We'll then Link Summon an LP, use World Chalice Guard Dragon's Effect to get the Guard back, and Link Summon a Pisty, use LP's Effect for a Red Eyes, and Red Eyes is to bring back the Guard again. We'll then Link Summon a copy of Sorry, and ooh, a Quick Launch. Let's see how this plays out. We're then going to bring back this copy of Red Eyes, use its effect to get a Flamvel Guard, go into Agrippin, use Agrippin's effect to get an Archfiend Abyss, and then Link Summon a Romulus. We'll use Romulus' effect to get a copy of Dragon Ravine to hand, then we'll activate Dragon Ravine, discarding Miscellaneous Source, so good to send a copy of Tempest. We'll Special Summon the Tempest, and activate the Grave Effect of Miscellaneous Source for an Aeolo, before Synchro Summoning a copy of Borolode Savage. We'll equip a couple of counters to that sucker, and then Special Summon a copy of Absurado Dragon, using it as Link Material for Spheres, so we can then add a copy of Silver Rocket to hand. We'll use Tracer's effect for Rocket Synchron, and then Link Summon a copy of Boral Sword. You'll see why in a second. Our opponent leads by Special Summoning a copy of Pankratops, and you're going to have to activate the effect to get any value out of it. We have Called by the Grave, so we don't have to expend a single negate on this Pankratops. Our opponent's going to activate Terraforming, activate Lost World, that is very much not resolving, and then recognize they need to concede. Alright, so it's time for game 3, and you know what that means, a best of 3 versus meta. Our opponent's playing Salaman Great, which theoretically probably has a really, really good matchup versus us. They play a ton of hand traps, and we can't play through two. Our opener is dirty, but it gets the job done. We're going to lead with an unexpected die to get a copy of Alexandrite Dragon from deck. We'll then normal summon a copy of Aeolo. Hey, you do what you have to to Synchro Summon Eeb. We'll then activate World Legacy Guard Dragon to bring back this copy of Alexandrite Dragon before Link summoning a copy of Lambda. We'll then Special Summon a World Chalice Guard Dragon from deck going into LP, use Guard Dragon's effect to bring back Alexandrite, and Link summoning a Pisty. We'll then activate the effect of LP, which eats an Ash Blossom, which then eats a Called by the Grave. That's going to lead to a Red Eyes on our side of the board and an Alexandrite soon after. We'll activate Sari's effect, and ooh, is that a fresh Over Raptor? We'll bring back this copy of Red Eyes, use its effect to bring back Alexandrite, and then Link summon a copy of Agrippin. We'll use Agrippin for an Archfiend Abyss before using Romulus's effect afterwards. Now that we have all those pesky Gar Dragons off our side of the field, it's time to use the effect of Sari to bring out Over Raptor and get Carbon End to hand. We'll ditch it to send a copy of Tempest to Graveyard, Special Summon that, and Special Summon a copy of Flamvel Guard from deck off of Carbon End to go into Borolode Savage. We'll activate the effect of him in order to equip a Lambda before Special Summoning a Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, a Spheres, activating that effect, Special Summoning a White Dragon Wyvern Buster, and ending on Opelousa and a Sept Called by the Grave. Our opponent's going to lead with a Will the Salaman Great. They'll Special Summon a Gazelle from hand. We'll activate Appaloosa. They'll activate Ghost Ogre, but we have Called by the Grave. This is looking pretty good for us. Afterwards, we're going to go to Battle Phase, attack into our copy of Spheres. We will chain Spheres to put back World Legacy Guard Dragon. They will Ash, but 
Ooh, called by the grave is still in effect. That's awkward. They're going to go into Bailinx. We will negate the effect of Bailinx. Why not? They only have one card remaining. They'll pass, and we draw for turn. We find a Foolish Burial. We're going to activate Tempest. Afterwards, we're going to link summon a Phoenix to hit that set card. I don't know, maybe it's a Roar or something. It's a Manhunt, but of course, we can always just negate it. It'll be negated and then destroyed by Phoenix's effect. Add Serrator triggers, which means we're able to normal summon a copy of Rocket Tracer, destroy our Dragon's Ravine for a copy of Silver Rocket, and link summon Boral Sword. This, of course, is the end of the game. We'll get in for 30 3500 and did you know Archfiend Abyss has an effect? I didn't. All right, so it's time for game two and ooh, yuck. Our opponent's opener is terrible, but somehow ours is even worse. Aeolo in the grip again! <sighs> Okay, our opponent's going to leave with a copy of Silent Mining. At the very least, we have the Ash for this. I can't pass up a two-for-one, folks. Afterwards, we're going to normal summon a copy of Salman Great Spinny, Special Backup Secretary, and I recognize the game is likely over. They're going to Special Summon back the Spinny, go into Mirage Stallio, get a copy of Gazelle from deck, send a copy of Roar to Graveyard before Link Summoning a Sunlight Wolf, activating Sanctuary, Link Summoning a copy of Bay Lynx, Reincarnation Summoning a Sunlight Wolf, setting two and passing. For turn, we draw an Unexpected Die, which unlocks our hand, sort of. We're going to normal summon a copy of Silver Rocket Dragon, go into Eve, which eats a roar, but I have one more trick up my sleeve. We'll activate Foolish Burial to send Tempest, Special Tempest at Link Point. Our opponent thinks it's a misplay, but when they crack down our monster, I'll show them the power of World Chalice Guard Dragon! Yeah, we'll concede. Alright, so it's time for game three, and while I dislike this copy of World Chalice Guard Dragon in my opener, at the very least, our hand can play through it. We're going to lead with a quick launch for a copy of Rocket Tracer. We'll normal summon a copy of World Chalice Guard Dragon before Synchro Summoning an Eve and activating her effect. We'll activate World Legacy Guard Dragon on a World Chalice Guard Dragon, and then we'll special summon a Destrudo from hand for the additional Guard Dragon before we go into Lambda, use Eve's effect to bring back World Chalice, go into LP, go into Pisty, activate LP, and eat a Ghost Ogre. Okay, we can still make something happen. We're going to activate Quick Launch, go into Triple Burst Dragon, activate Pisty to bring back Tracer, use Tracer's effect to get a copy of Silver Rocket from deck, and end on a Borload Savage Dragon. It's not unbeatable, but it's also not nothing. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Flame Buffer Low. Oh, and I love how they can chain block me here, really making my hand look worthless right now. They're going to activate Foxy's effect and then Spinny's effect before overlaying for a Mirage Stallio. They'll activate that effect. I figure it's as good a time as any to Ash Blossom. And then they'll force the negation from Borload Savage by activating the Grave Effect of Mirage Stallio. From here, they can just pop off. They're going to activate Circle. After that, they're going to activate the effect of Sanctuary and the effect of Spinny, triggering the effect of Gazelle in hand. When they send a copy of Fusion Fire off of Gazelle, I recognize the game is over. They're going to go into Violet Chimera, use Sunlight Wolf and Violet Chimera, and Falco's effect uh, really shutting the door on any possible victory for me. They'll do 16 and 8, and I have to draw something unbeatable off of the top. What'll I find? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I think that's enough. So we're back with the deck, and huh. You know, I was ready to proclaim this as the tier 0 threat that finally ends Yu Gi Oh!, but it really only seemed okay. Uh, let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, their turn ones are unmatched. That hero game in particular resembled a Break My Board Zodiac style setup, and outside of Sphere Mode or Super Poly, I have no idea what any competent deck would do to out it. Two, the access to three mat Appaloosas means that any deck that relies on too many monster effects, Salaman Grade for example, will have an incredibly tough time making it through boards even with something like Super Polymerization. And three, Quick Launch is such an insane card, and any opportunity to jam it is a victory in my book. It legitimately feels like emergency teleport in Teledad, obscenely strong, and helps make mediocre boards at least end on Boraload. And the cons. One, it's fragile. I mean, it's got about 15 different choke points. Ib, LP, removal on the Lambda, and unlike Crusadia Danger Thunder, is very, very reliant on its normal summon, especially for hands that don't include Quick Launch. Two, it's not repeatable. One of the benefits of Crusadia Danger Thunder is that even if your opponent is able to break your board, you can kind of just keep summoning Colossi to your heart's content, which is often enough to win provided beating your Bunguses took enough resources. In this deck, when you're broken, you're broken. And three, it's got all of the same weaknesses as every other Guard Dragon deck. It loses to Super Poly, it can't beat well-timed Sphere Modes and Kaijus, and Nibiru is about to make its existence on this planet a lot less likely. All in all, it's a good deck, but I can't identify a reason that it's preferable to play over Crusadia Danger Thunder, and that deck is still facing intense opposition from other meta matchups. Likely, it's a tier 2 strategy that'll occupy collective consciousness because of the power of its uninterrupted boards, but will underperform at events because of, you know, interruption. So, that's that. While I appreciate all of my viewers, a special thanks to my patrons, especially Michael Salmior, Distrin, Lucas Girdis, Adam Trevino, Second, Lieutenant Labcoat, Meepmoto27, Adrian Bra, Adam Sunquist, 
Isaac Jackson, and Donnie Fillerup. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash mbtygo every Monday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.